Today, we become legends. So with Year 10 Smite dropping in just a few days from now and a bunch of new items being added with the update and a bunch of reworked ones as well, I thought I'd bring you a tier list of me ranking my personal thoughts on all of these new items and the like majorly reworked ones. Ranking them against each other, you know, which ones are most powerful, which ones are worth building and, and which ones aren't basically. Before we start though, a quick disclaimer that it's very early, you know, I've only been playing PTS for about five days as of recording this and we don't really have that much data on what's going to be like super powerful, but we do have a good general idea and especially from my experience, I've played a lot of the PTS this round and so I've got a good like idea of what is powerful and what's not but of course take my opinion with a grain of salt have a look around at what other people think about the items and stuff like that before you decide on you know something being completely broken just on my word alone but yeah without further ado let's jump right in so first up here we have Absolution. This is 2250 gold, 60 magical prots, 250 health, 10% CCR, and the passive, whenever you cast your ult on a 40 second internal cooldown, you get like a basically a CC immunity aura for 0.6 seconds that like pulses out from you and makes people immune to CCs for a little while. So generally a pretty a pretty supportive item. Maybe you would see it on solos occasionally, but it's going to be mostly like a support item if your backliners get dived or whatever, you know. This is going to be a pretty hard counter to stuff like Fen ult, you know, those very big single target CCs that are like aiming to go on your back line and just and just grab everyone. Or not grab everyone, I guess, but like grab one person, you know. Those very telegraphed CCs that you know are going to be coming and that you can cleanse like as, the, as they hit kind of thing. It's going to be useful against those. Uh, it's also quite niche because you're going to need a support that has a very quick cast ultimate. You know, you're not going to want this on Guardians with really slow casting ultimates because the effect happens as your ult is finished casting like the other Arthurian items do and it's not uh, immediately as you cast your ultimate. So if you do have an ult that takes a couple of seconds or even one second to cast, that might honestly be too slow for this item to be good. So so you definitely do want a character with a fast ult to make use of that. I think I'm going to put this item in B purely because it seems very situational. I think it can be a very good item. The stats on it are like, okay, the stats aren't great to be fair, but they're all right. Um, and it can be very clutch. So like in certain situations, this could be like an S tier item, you know, against a Fenrir or if you're like Bacchus or something like that, where you can get like, it really activates quickly. Um, it could be really good, but it's going to be very situational. Abyssal Stone, this is honestly why I don't really know how to rate because it's very hard to see the impact this item is actually having because you don't really see, you know, like the damage numbers or the amount you're healing or whatever you would like you would from other items. This negative CDR is very hard to notice if it has an impact because if someone didn't cast their still or two on you, is that because you had this on them and they had an increased cooldown that they couldn't use it or did they just not choose to use it or would it have already been on cooldown anyway? So like it is kind of hard to um, kind of grasp where this item ranks on the tier list really. So I'm going to drop it in A for now. The stats on it are pretty good. The stats are basically released Manticore Spikes level stats. So you have 40 of each prots and 300 health. 2350 gold is pretty cheap as well. So I do think this item is good. It's just very hard to place it like significantly above A or significantly below A or whatever because it's kind of hard to see like the impact that it has. I think as we see this item be used more and we kind of get a little bit of a feel for like how impactful it is to be hit by it, it could potentially be an S tier item. I think it can be very good. But for now, I'm just going to leave it in A. Agdra's Fury is going to be our first S plus item. This thing is insane. It's already been nerfed on the PTS. That's how good this item was. Um, basically, before the nerf, it was able to easily do like four or 500 true damage on one of your basic attacks when you're at max stacks for this thing. Uh, getting to max stacks isn't even that hard, especially if you're building this on high sustained solo laners like Arteo. You know, you need to take, I think, 30% of your max health in damage. Um, I assume it's post mitigation. If it's pre mitigation, this item's even more broken than I think it is, but I'm pretty sure it's post mitigation. Take 30% of your maximum health. Uh, you need to do that, and then you're going to be at max stacks, and you just run in and you hit someone for 500 true damage with a basic attack. Uh, plus all your other abilities and stuff, you can solo backliners with this very easily. Super good on high sustain characters, as I said, because you can take 30%, but there's a sustain off like 10 or 15% of that, and like not really lose that much health overall, and get more and more procs of this throughout the team fight, and just do insane burst damage on people. This item's crazy. It has been nerfed, and it's like maybe it could come down to S, but to be honest, I don't think it will. This item's just super strong. Bladed Boomerang, I'm going to drop in A. This item, when I initially saw it, I thought it was going to be really, really good because the amount of like stuff it can actually provide to you is kind of insane. Yeah, if we have a look at the stats here, uh, 2600 gold, so it is a little bit expensive, but 40 power, 15% crit, uh, 20% crit, sorry, 15% attack speed. And then the passive can provide you with up to three stacks of 10% crit and 4% movement speed. So when this thing's fully stacked, you're getting 50% crit on one item. 15% attack speed, 40 power, and then like 12% movement speed. So when it's fully stacked, this item's kind of insane, but it does just feel a little bit inconsistent to me because it does like drop a buff on the ground that you have to kind of run over and pick up. And sometimes that's a little bit awkward to do if you're a hunter because like if someone's diving, you might just be like backing away from them, hitting them with basics and it can be kind of hard to get those. So maybe this isn't necessarily a hunter item. Maybe this is better on like Mercury and stuff that can more get in melee range and pick up the 
uh, deployables from this a little bit easier. But yeah, super high potential item in terms of like the maximum value that it can provide, but it does just seem like it's not going to be providing that maximum value all the time. Also, Rage got buffed this patch and Rage is insane now. Uh, I'm not going to be ranking it because it's just like a rework. It's not like a full on new item, so it won't be on this tier list, but Rage is really good right now. Rage is kind of insane. And so generally, like when you're going for that super high crit item alongside like maybe your Deathbringer and then maybe one other crit item, you just go Rage instead a lot of the time because Rage is super good. So you go like Rage, Deathbringer and like either Wind Demon or maybe some other crit item, um, the Arthurian one, for example. This item just feels like it's good, but it's not as good as you would think it is when like you read it on paper. Like on paper, it's like SRS plus, but in practice, I think it's just like a pretty decent item. Breastplate of Regrowth. I think I'll drop it in, uh, is it A or B? It, it's definitely an A tier item. The only reason I would debate putting it in B is because it is very situational, a bit a bit similar to Absolution here. Like this is only going to be good on like a few characters, but I think I will drop it in A because it is very good. It's, it's very stat efficient. Now it's got really good stats for like actually rushing this, you know, first or second item in the soul and laning phase, which is where you're going to be mostly building this item. Uh, obviously super good for like Herc, super good for Amaterasu, pretty good on Surtur actually because it's passive procs it. Yeah, the item is super good. Um, I just think it's a little bit situational, which might maybe want to drop it down to B. I'll, I'll see throughout the rest of this tier list where I place everything else and whether I want to drop it down, but it would kind of be hovering between these two tiers for me basically because it is a little situational. Uh, next up we have Caduceus Club, which I think is going to be our first C tier item. This just not, does not seem good to me. The stats were basically nerfed from when it was a shield. Like the stats are definitely not that good for soul learners anymore. It's 30 power, 250 health, and then a little bit of MP5 with the passive of 20% increased healing for 2,500 gold. Like, that's a steep price to pay for an item with that kind of base stats. Those base stats are really horrible. So, like, really, you might only want this if, like, you really need it. Like, it's probably still good on Guan, I guess, but it's even, it's just less good than it was before because the stats, the stat spread was much better before this change. Yeah, I, I would struggle to put this thing above C tier. It just doesn't seem that good right now. So, Cannoneer's Curious is up next. Uh, I think I'm going to drop this thing in B. It just doesn't seem that great. Like, it's kind of, it's sort of meant to be a support item, I guess, in that, like, it's going to provide bonus gold to, like, your nearest ally, so you can, like, give your allies more gold in that way, but it just doesn't seem to be that supportive of an item in terms of its general effect. Like, supports don't really need to be, like, executing the wave and dealing big burst damage to it, so it's more of a soul laner item in that regard, but then it's just, it's not really needed in solo. It, it feels like it's just, there isn't really a place for this item necessarily, even though it's not terrible. I think the item is decent. The base stats for the cost are okay. But you know, it, it does seem to be aimed at a more supportive aspect because especially the base stats as well, the base stats are an even spread of um, both kind of protections, which makes you think it's a support item because this is something you're going to be rushing early in the game because you want that executing a minion effect as early as possible. So you're probably going to be rushing this first or maybe second, but probably first. And so it doesn't really make sense in solo because, yeah, you have a, a lot of health on it and s some of each protections, but in solo, you're generally just getting a dedicated defense item for your lane opponent and you're not getting something with 30 of each. You'd be getting something with like 60 of one, for example. And so it's just a little bit weird. It feels like in support, it's not that good because it has like some things that you make you don't want to build it there. And then also in solo, it's not that great either because it has things that you don't want to build it there. So it feels like it just doesn't really have a home. I think I'll leave it in B for now. Cyclopean Ring. Oh, is it S or is it A? That's the question. I've only played one game with this item and I've not seen anyone else build it. So th this opinion is based on a very loose amount of evidence, but I do think this item is quite good. I think since we have nothing in S right now, we'll, we'll drop it there because I think it really could be S or it could be A, uh, depending on how you view things. Um, it, the item itself, I believe, is an S tier item. It's super good. 8% max health damage, and then if you're basic attacking repeatedly, you're going to be getting that effect, like, every few seconds, basically. And so it is pretty much the equivalent of a magical kin size, maybe a little bit worse. Uh, it's a little bit expensive. The base stats on it aren't amazing, but the effect is really good, and it's going to allow magical ADCs to absolutely delete tanks in the late game. Uh, the only thing is, magical ADCs just don't seem that good in this new patch. Uh, Hunter's got some really good new items, like Assy. Assy's already been nerfed on the PTS because people are rushing at first item because his stats were just crazy good uh, but it, it just seems like physical hunters are going to be a lot better than the magical ADCs in this patch and so that's why I might drop it down to A because it's going to be hard like even this item that is quite good I don't know if it's justifiable enough to play magical ADCs especially when Bringer Fakate got removed for this like if you could build Bringer Fakate and this it will probably be quite a bit better for magical ADCs because Ring of Hikate was kind of their early game bridge item that gave them some lifesteal and some like ability to box in the early game. Uh, but you're just going to get outboxed by hunters basically in the early game as a magical ADC no matter what you do now on this new patch. And so it, it's kind of hard to make them work, but I think the item itself is quite good. Dawnbringer, we'll drop it in B for now. I'm not a huge fan of this item to be honest. Uh, it is worth noting that it can bypass the protection cap. So if you're very high, like if you're pretty much capped protections and you use this, 
Uh, that effect that gives you um, 5% more per enemy god near you, that will bypass the protection cap. And so you can get a little bit over with this. But like, other than that, it just doesn't really seem that great. The movement speed is nice to be able to chase people down and stuff. Like, it's not a bad item, I don't think. It's just not as good as some of the other crazy items they've been adding this season. It's just like, it's an okay item. It's like... If you want this, yeah, you can try it. I don't think it's that good, though. Uh, Demon Blade, I'm just going to drop in A tier. It is Wind Demon. I don't think anything changed on it. I don't even think they changed any of the base stats. They literally just put on the short sword tree, and that's it. So this item's still good. It was good before. Still good now. Uh, I will just drop it in A. Lotus Sickle is an interesting one. I think I'm going to put it in A, but this is probably bordering on being S for the characters that it's good for. The only reason I'm putting it in A is because, again, like Phalanx and like... Um, Breastplate of Regrowth is, is quite situational. Uh, you only want this on a certain few uh, certain few characters in the game, like the healer supports mostly. But on those gods that you want this item on, you know, the Sylvanases, the Terrors, those kind of pigs, I think it is really good. Like, the stat spread is super nice. It's 2,000 gold, so really cheap. Uh, it has a ton of health on it now. It has cooldown reduction now, both of which it didn't have before on the item. So I think for supports, this item is really good. It's just, obviously, it's situational. You only want it on healer supports, really. You could play around with it on healer mages as well, uh, especially if you're playing, like, maybe healer mages in solo or something, or if you just want a little bit more defense in mid, like, maybe if the enemy jungle is diving you a ton, you could maybe grab this up and it'll make you quite tanky. Uh, and also has some cooldown reduction, which is nice. Phalanx. So... I don't want to get burned on this item again, so I'm going to put it in ATI. I think it's good, but I said I thought Tyrannical Plate Helm was good when they initially revealed that item, and it turned out to be absolute garbage. Uh, you know, the minion buffing effect, it has to be very powerful, and it is this time. It's 75% attack speed and something else, I believe, maybe protections. Um, that you can give to people as long as people are boxing you in solo. But you can play around this item a little bit. I believe it procs off of basic attacking. Yeah, whenever you are basic attacked by an enemy god, friendly minions within 40 units gain a stack of 20% uh, attack speed and 15 of each protection. So it is a really insane effect if the enemy is going to be boxing you. If they land three basic attacks on you, like in the middle of the wave, you're, you're going to get like, oh, it's not 25% attack speed, it's 20% actually. So they're going to get 60% attack speed and 45 of each protections. That's really powerful. But yeah, as I said, you can technically play around it. Uh, if you if you are getting like hard pushed by the item, you can just not basic attack them. Obviously, it's quite difficult to do that if you're in like a boxing situation. So it is going to go off a lot of the time. But if you're a more ability based god, you know, if you're King Arthur or something, you can kind of just avoid basic attacking them for the most part and try and not get this proc. I do believe this item's good. I almost want to put it in S, but I don't want to get burned again because as I said, I said Tyrannical Player Helm was going to be good, and it just turns out these kind of items have to be insane for them to be any good. Uh, Prophetic Cloak, our uh, second S tier, probably our final S, uh, uh, S plus, sorry, our final S plus tier, I believe. This item, again, like Archdruid's Fury, has already been nerfed on the PTS. They've taken down the cooldown reduction from 20% to 10 and also taking down the mitigations on the upgraded version of it. And so again, this item could come down to S, but I still think it's just so good that it's probably still, like, one of the best items in the game. Uh, the stat spread on it is just absolutely ridiculous. Let, let me find the full stats of it. So for 2,350 gold, you get 55 of each prots, 150 health, 10% uh, CDR now instead of 20%. Uh, 30 of those prots are in an aura to your teammates, which is kind of insane. And then up to 10 or 20% damage mitigation. I can't remember the exact amount they actually nerfed it down to. I don't even think they said what they nerfed it down to. I'd have to check on PTS. But if it's down to like 5 and 10 instead of 10 and 20, that's a big nerf. And maybe it comes down to S if that's the case. But this item's just so insane for the for the cost, to be honest. It is very slow to stack. I will admit that. It is insanely slow to stack. You're only going to finish this, you know, if you rush it like second item or something as support. You're only going to finish the stacks like 30 minutes into the game. So the, the thing is... You're only going to finish the stack super late, but the item itself, just as you're stacking it up, is still really good anyway. Like, for the cost, if you're just getting a few of those stacks online, it's still really good even before you've got it evolved. And then when it becomes evolved, it's like the best item in the game. So, I think it is still really good, even after the nerfs that it's taken. Um, definitely very good in support. Um, you know, maybe after your Thieves, potentially before your Thieves, but I do like to go Thieves first to make sure I've got that early game tankiness. Uh, and you could maybe even build this in solo as well. It kind of depends. The only thing with this item in solo is that you have to build it a little bit later your build because sure you can buy it in the laning phase and just get like your physical or your magical stacks on it versus your lane opponent and then when you rotate try and focus more on hitting the different kind that you need more stacks of but it can be a little bit difficult and you'll stack it quite slowly uh, in the laning phase once you've like because you're going to max out your stacks on one kind and then you're going to need to get your stacks on the other kind to actually evolve it whereas with supports you're often fighting both damage types consistently in the early game and so you can find the stacks a lot easier in support uh shadow drinker i think i'm gonna drop in s so this item is way cheaper than i thought it was gonna be uh when they initially revealed this item and they hadn't shown like the um the cost and stuff i assumed this was going to be like at least 2600 maybe like a 2800 gold item because the effect is really good uh the effect 
is very good, but obviously it's very snowball-y. You know, if you're getting a lot of kills, you're probably already going to win that team fight anyway, but it can help you snowball like one kill into like, you know, if you kill the enemy hunter or something, you go invisible, then it's really hard for the mage to deal with you. You can probably kill the mage as well. So like, it snowballs the fight super hard, but the thing is the base stats on this item are just really good for the cost. It comes with 50 power, 10 flat pen, and 7% movement speed. Those are all stats you want on most junglers in the early game. Power, pen, movement speed, that's basically what, what you want as a jungler. So it has all the stats you want, and then you get the really powerful passive as well for a pretty cheap cost. I think this item's super good. All right, next up we have Stone of Binding, which I think is also an S tier item. This item's super good, man. This item's super good. Uh, soul in, support, uh, whichever tank you want to build it on, I think this item's really good. The base stats are now competitive. 2300 gold for 40 of each props and 250 health is good. It's not insane, but it's very good. Uh, obviously, in previous years of Smite, that would have been insane, but the stats have been a little bit inflated, especially on tank items lately, and so that, like, 40 of each and 250 for, three, uh, for 2300 is just, like, decent. But then the passive is really, really good. Uh, by late game, it's going to be 25 flat pen of each, so you're basically removing about half of a backliner's protections by hitting them with Sauna Binding in the late game. And obviously, this works on any kind of crowd control, so super easy to apply to the backline. Often, if you have, like, big AoE slows or whatever, you can apply it super easily. Technically, it took a small nerf to the passive like super early game because it used to just be 10 and now it's 5 plus 1 per level but by the time you reach level 5 this item is like as efficient as it was before and then beyond that it just gets better and better and better and of course you know you're not even going to have this item completed by level 5 a lot of the time because it's usually not going to be like your first item rush usually you'll get this like second I feel like is a good slot for this maybe even third but yeah this item like it stays relevant into the late game now because as I said you can remove basically half of a backline's protections by just hitting them with this in the late game because it's 25 of each that you're removing which is super good and finally we have tablet of destinies so I'm going to actually put this in S and not S+. Plus. I know when I was initially like reacting to this item, I was like, this is completely batshit insane. It's going to be one of the best items in the game. But I don't think it's actually as good as it looks on paper because it's super, super slow to stack. It might even be slower than Prophetic Cloak. You know, Prophetic Cloak, you're looking at 25 to 30 minutes, even if you're being optimal with it. Uh, to get it fully stacked. With Tablet of Destinies, you're looking at 35 to 40 minutes to get this thing fully done. There have been so many games I've seen where, like, midlaners end the game with 25 to 30 stacks on this item. But similar to Prophetic Cloak, the thing is, you don't need all the stacks for this item to be good. It's still really good, even if you only have, like, 20 to 25 stacks. You're still dealing a bunch of extra true damage. Um, yeah, but that limitation of uh, every two seconds does really put a bit of a damper on it. And also, it being 50 stacks, that's quite a lot. Um, you're not going to get this item fully stacked in every single game. Like, just come to accept that. But even with only a certain amount of stacks on it, like maybe even only with half stacks, it's still really good. And yeah, that's my thoughts on all the new items coming to the game in 10.1. Uh, it's going to be launching pretty soon, so hopefully you guys enjoy like my take on uh, what, what you should be building in terms of the new items. Let me know your own thoughts down below. Do you agree with my list? What things don't you agree with? Um, I'm sure you don't agree with all of it. You pretty much have to agree with these two, right? Like, these two items are absolute, absolute nuts. But uh, you might disagree on some of it, so do let me know down below, and I will catch you guys in another one later on. Have a great day, and peace out, you nerds.